morning, this is Kim Hammer, pastor of Saline Baptist Church, community of Tull outside Benton with your devotion taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter five. In Deuteronomy chapter five, Moses is continuing to remind the generation that's about to enter the promised land of what God had told their forefathers. And so he is now up to the point of reminding them about the 10 commandments. One thing that is interesting is in chapter five and verse three, it says, it was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. God made the covenant with this generation, but he gave it to the previous generation, but not to keep. And the reason is that God knew that the previous generation that Moses had shared the same things with was gonna be a generation that would die off in the wilderness. Had he given it to that generation alone, then it would have died off the promises and the covenant would have died off with them as a result of their sinful life where the Lord had to strike them down because they were disobedient to his word. So when we read chapter five and verse three and he says he didn't give it to his fathers, didn't mean that he didn't share it with them, didn't mean that he didn't make them aware of it, didn't mean that he didn't speak to them, but as far as the one that he was gonna give it to, it was this generation that was about to go in the promised land because they were the ones who at that time were not disobedient to the Lord's way. Granted, they were a younger generation that were probably not, had reached the age of accountability yet, but nonetheless, they were a generation that were raised up over the 40 years that they saw their loved ones die in the wilderness because they were disobedient to God's word. And this brought them to this point that Moses is now about to allow them to go into the promised land and they are gonna be the covenant keepers that God gave this covenant to so that it could continue to live on instead of die in the wilderness with the previous generation. So it's an important distinction that it says that this covenant was given to this generation because now the responsibility rested solely with them to perpetuate it and to carry it on and to make sure that it was shared with future generations with the opportunity that were given them. And that's a modern day lesson for us. The word of God has been given to us. It's his covenant to us. And it's our job to make sure that this generation shares it with the next generation so that it doesn't die off with the next generation. And that begins by us doing what Moses told them to do in the verses that we're gonna to look today, to teach their children and to keep it as a daily reminder in their life so that they wouldn't forget it, nor would they take it for granted. We find that as Moses begins to give them the 10 commandments, the 10 commandments are good for many things. The commandments are good for individual life, it's good for family life, it's good for community life, and it's good for spiritual life. But it's good for a lot of things. But those are four areas that the 10 commandments have touch points to our life that if we would apply the 10 commandments, just the simple 10 commandments and live by them, how much better a society and how much better of a world we would have. Only stands to reason that the God of this world, Satan, wants to take us away from the 10 commandments because the further he can drag us away from the 10 commandments, the further he can drag us away from God blessing us because we are obedient to the 10 commandments. If everything in society is going so right and going so good with all the laws that we have, why is it that the 10 commandments do not have a stronger place in our society and moving away from the 10 commandments has not created a better society, but in reality has created a society that's become more complex, more sinful, and has moved further away from God. So the challenge is for us to get back to the 10 commandments and just obey these 10 simple things that God asks us to do. In verse 29, it kind of gives us the motive or the incentive as to why we should do so. It says, oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commandments always so that it might go well with them and their children forever. If we would be obedient to the 10 commandments and to the laws and the decrees that Moses is giving to the nation of Israel, to God's people, if God's people would take these 10 commandments and these decrees seriously and apply them to our life, then God's desire for us is that all would go well. That would also introduce the thought that when we are not compliant to the 10 commandments and we are not compliant to the laws and the decrees that God has given to the nation of Israel, that things will not go well for us. So when you look around the world today and you see things not going so well, you can draw a very logical, sensible conclusion that it's because we've gotten away from the word of God, we've gotten away from the 10 commandments, we've gotten away from the laws and the decrees that God gave to Moses to give to the nation of Israel, to God's people, and it's not God's fault that things are not going well, it's our fault. In verse 32, he gives them a word of encouragement or warning, he says, so be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. And here are two simple components of that commandment. He says, do not turn aside to the right or to the left. In other words, stay centered, stay in the middle of the road. 
Don't get off in the ditches. Stay on the straight and narrow, if you would. You know, Satan's desire is to drag us off to the left or to drag us off to the right, to get us off on the side roads that are dead-end roads that are not going to lead to anything that God wants us to be involved with. But yet, it's like going down a one-way road with no way out. Once you get down there, you're stuck. But the Bible also says that the Lord will pick us up out of the miry clay of which we've gotten ourselves stuck in, and he will set us back on the straight and narrow. So whenever it is that we do way off the road or that we do go wayward off the road, remember that God is there to rescue us and to tow us out if we will so allow him to do so. But in verse 32, it very specifically says to be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. And the first thing is don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right, don't do your own thinking. Instead, let God do your thinking for you and just be obedient to his word. The second thing he said in verse 32 is to walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you. And he puts a little bit extra incentive on it so that you may live, so that you may prosper, so that you may prolong the days in the land that you, have, that you are possessing. Number one, that physically you would just continue to live. Number two, that while you live, you would prosper. And number three, the land that you're in, you will be in it for a long time. Bible tells us the Lord establishes kingdoms and he removes kingdoms. He allows nations to exist and he removes nations because they go wayward. They don't stay in the center. They go left or they go right. They get off track. But what God's word is telling us in verse 32 is this, that if we'll be careful to do what the Lord tells us to do, then he is going to bless us. We will live and we will live long, prosperous lives in the land that he has given us. Just pray that you have a great day and also that you're enjoying the beautiful sunrise behind me.